Hi, I'm Matthew Kelly, and welcome to Profoundly Human. My guest today is Kim, singer, songwriter, extraordinary human being, um, winner of uh, Billboard Awards, Grammy nominations, sold millions of albums, six studio albums. His music is phenomenal, has been inspiring me for many, many years. Recently released a book, Kim, Share My Life. Kim, it's an honor to have you. Thanks for joining. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Matthew. It's great to see you again. Uh, so good. In the book, you talk about lost years. And yeah. uh, tell us a little bit about your lost years. Um, my lost years were probably from uh, the young teenager to uh, my early 20s. Um, in my book, I talk about dealing with uh, my struggles with homelessness and, and addiction to alcohol and drugs. I talk about uh, mental illness. I talk about the dysfunction, you know, growing up in, 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 in my home. Um, those were my lost years, you know, those, those were my lost years. And uh, on July 23rd of 1990, um, I got, I got sober, you know, and um, uh, in the book, I talk about, the fact that, you know, a lot of people think that my story is one of rags to riches, but it's really the one of the, it's really a story of, about the prodigal son. You mm. know? The Bible talks about, you know, he, he came to himself. I came to myself July 23rd of 1990. You know, I came to the understanding or the idea that my best thinking, the best that I could do, you know, um, the best that my intellect and my ego, the the furthest that they could get me was to be sleeping outside homeless on the Detroit Riverbank, trying to nurse a can of beer until the next morning when I hoped that the Salvation Army would let me back into their facility so that I could I could I, I really and I really wasn't thinking that I was going to change my life around. I just really needed to get back into a situation where, you know, I could sleep and I could be warm. And um, and I and I gave up on my idea of how to how to how to transform my life. Yeah. Yeah. Homelessness is a huge social issue today. Yeah. Well, you obviously you've experienced it. What does the average person not know or understand about homelessness? Um, being homeless is, is probably one of the most traumatic experiences an individual can have. Um, it is, it is deeply painful to wake up in the morning and, and not know where you're going to lay your head at night. You know, um, it's deeply uh, disheartening to, you know, you're fearful, you know, there's, there's being fear, there, there, there's being afraid of being in the dark, but you're literally afraid, you know, once night falls, it's like, where, where am I going to be? You know, um, a lot of people who are homeless are uh, disconnected from their families. Um, there's a misperception that everybody, you know, who's, who's, who's homeless is, is, uh, you know, is weak willed, um, not intelligent. You know, there's a lot of mental illness out on the street. There's uh, there are there are uh, veterans out on the street. Um, there are in, to, in today's age. I mean, is the complexion of, of homelessness has changed to a degree where like there are people who are, you know, we we look for security in our jobs. Dude, there's like no security out here. Right. So there are people who have, you know, who at one day were working at a Fortune 500 company and then the next day, you know, they've lost it all. You know, there are former executives, you know, who are who are living out on the street, you know, who have lived well and who are educated, well educated, who have whole degrees, you know, doctorates who are living out on the streets, you know. So um, because I've had the experience, of course, I I can I, I can identify and I can relate and I can have uh, I can I can and I have compassion. But I would ask that that everyone treat you know, these individuals that we want to cross in our lives who may be experiencing that, you know, treat them with the same grace that you're trying, that, 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 that you're asking for, for yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Every day, you know, we, in the media, we see articles in, you know, Vanity Fair, Rolling Stone, GQ, Vogue about, you know, people reinventing themselves. And uh, those 
articles are usually fairly shallow. The, the, the nature of the reinvention is, is usually fairly um, superficial. Yeah. You really reinvented yourself. Yeah. Um, walk us through a little bit, like, how did that happen? What did that look like? What were your hopes? What were your fears? And, and how did it play out differently than what you thought it would? You know, for me, you know, that's God's work. Right. We don't we didn't, I didn't reinvent nothing. That's God's work. You know what I mean? God is taking us. He has planted in us this thing. And, you know, I think that our job is to uncover this thing, you know, to get through our darkness, to get through our through our bondage, to get through our weakness, to get through the dysfunction, the sin of our lives and un and, un and uncover this thing. And it's still and it's still unfolding. You know what I'm saying? And um um, you know, I've always wanted, I've always known what I've wanted to do. I've always wanted to be, you know, in music and, uh, I chased record deals for a long time, you know, as a, as a, as a much younger man. And I'm, and I'm glad that that didn't, that it didn't happen when, when I wanted it to happen. You know, uh, I was trying to get a record deal as a teenager. If I'd gotten a record deal when I was 19, you and I would not be having this conversation today, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I got a record deal when I was 34 years old, when it's supposed to be impossible to get signed to a major label, you know, making R&B music, making love songs and ballads, you know, and um, but, you know, that's exactly what happened for me. You know, I financed my first album on an American Express business line of credit. Right. Don't try to sit home. <laughs> <laughs> um you know, a lot of ups and downs along the way, a lot of doubt along the way. You know, people talk about that. I've heard this 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 idea, you know, in uh, in faith communities that fear and fear and faith can't live in the same place. And I don't believe that that's true. You know, there's a lot of doubt. There was a lot of fear. There's a lot of uncertainty. But we move, you know, but I continue to move to move forward and 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 trust and and pray and stumble and fumble forward, you know, to uh, to watch my life, to watch to 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 allow God to change, you know, the man that I was internally. And when we change internally, you know, I, when we change things internally, our, ex, the, our external experience changes also. Mm. What, um, when you sit down, it's time to uh, write a new album, record a new album. Uh, what is your writing process? Um, I sit down and I write and I and I wait for the miracle to happen, really. You know, I don't I don't really sit down to um, I usually don't have, you know, I'm not the I'm not a prolific writer. I usually don't have an idea in mind, although my topic, my my topic is, is usually love because that's what, you know, love is is the root of, you know, all of our joy and all of our pain. Right. There is no more important. There is no, you know. <laughs> There is no greater topic, you know, no greater need in the world, you know. Um, and uh, so I usually sit at the keyboard and I noodle around until I find something interesting or something catches me. And, and then one idea builds upon the next. The music is first and then uh, the lyrics are informed by how the music makes me feel. The, the lyrics and the, and the melody are informed by how the music makes me feel. Writing is, you know, and I don't know if this might be, you know, you're a writer too, you know, it's the most, the most um, tragic, <laughs> difficult and painful, yet rewarding and beneficial thing that I do in my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. You've had the chance to uh, perform and record with some extraordinary people. What are some of the people you remember the most um, throughout your journey? Um, yeah, there are a lot of there are a lot of names in that hat from uh, from Stevie Wonder, you know, playing harmonica on on my uh, on my second album, um, or was it the first album? It was it was the second album, and uh, you know, sitting with him in, in in Los Angeles and and having dinner with him, you know, at Mr. Child's, going to the studio, sitting next to him, you know, on a piano. Um, Shaka Khan has has sat in on my set, and uh, and I and I had the pleasure of sitting in on her set and uh, uh, and singing uh, my funny Valentine, uh, which her her rendition is is my favorite. Uh, Ronna Isley and and Patti LaBelle have you know I've I'm you know I'm producing vocals on I produced a vocal on uh, on my Christmas album, which is my my favorite album. 
of my own is my Christmas album, What Christmas Means. And uh, there's a song on there called Jesus. And uh, Patti LaBelle and Ron Isley are, are, uh, are, are featured on that song. And, and I ended up, you know, I was working with the producer, but the producer couldn't get to Philadelphia to record Patti's vocals. So I, I ended up having to produce Patti's vocals. Like, how do you produce a vocal <laughs> on Patti LaBelle? <laughs> You know, um, and it just, you know, and it and it it continues. Michael McDonald at the Apollo, um, you know, uh, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just it's just really it just continues to unfold. It's been a really. I live a charmed life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So for the person who's listening. Watching. Maybe is not familiar with it, has not heard of you. Which album would you choose for them to listen to first? The first one, Chemistry. Okay. All right. The first Very one. Good. The first and when, one. You, when you wrote the book, what audience did you have in mind for the book? Um, in, uh, I guess in, innately, if, if that, I don't know if that's the right word. It sounds right. <laughs> innately, it's... It's my audience, you know. What I mean, and they, I mean, you know, first it's like, you know, I have a legion of 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 devoted fans who have been following me. It's this year's 20th year signed to the Motown label, 20 years since my first album. So there are people who have been who have been following me and who've been supporting me uh, you know, for for two decades. So my book is for them, but the book is also for, you know, anyone who hmm, <laughs> For anyone who has been nurturing the seed that God has planted in their heart while simultaneously not believing or not knowing if they would ever arrive, if their moment would ever come. Mm. You know, that's 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 who I wrote the book for. You know what I'm saying? Uh yeah. you know, we used to have this term in the restaurant business where we'd say we're, you know, where we were in the weeds. That means you got five tables going and like nobody's food is ready and all of them are yelling at you and you got to cash a check and we're in the weeds. You're in the weeds. I wrote my book for the people who are in the weeds of life, mm. you know, um, speaking the language, you know, speaking the speaking to the heart of people who are homeless, speaking to the heart of people who are struggling, who may be struggling with an, with with addiction, speaking uh to a, an audience who has, you know, childhood trauma. And we all have, and we all speak that language. You know, you speak that language, you know, uh, seven levels of intimacy. You you speak you speak that language, but it, it comes from you. There's an audience for you to reach and there's an audience. And I'm speaking the language of to, that, that speaks directly to somebody's heart too. We're all doing the, we're all doing the same work, you know? Um, so I, you know, that's that's who the book is for. You know, the book is for, the book is for everybody. You know, and it's allowed me to, to not now I can now I'm not only touching the lives of people who who have fallen in love with my music. You know, I'm touching people who I'm doing. I'm sitting in front of, of people and having conversations and 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 and, um, you know, with people who have never who are not even familiar with my music. You know, this is the story. It's the human interest, the you know, the divine thread of of suffering you know what i'm saying yeah. right and getting to the other side that connects yeah. that connects us all you know that's that's who the book is for so i remember the first time i met you and um you shared a little bit of your story at that time and and we've had a, a couple of chances to be together yeah listening to your music reading your book there, there's this mega theme that i see going through it all and i think you're probably one of the most grateful people i know and um, and yet I know other people who have had, um, you know, lost years, as you call them, or really dark times in their life. And they, they still seem very um, angry and resentful um, yeah. about that and, and toward almost everyone, even the people who had no involvement in it. Um, yeah. Where did this gratitude come from? Who tortured this gratitude? What is the source of this gratitude in your life and how do you keep it going? Um, you know, I, I got sober, I, you know, 19 years old, my life was, you know, 19 years old, I left my parents home, you know, I got I got sober when I was 23. So I was 23 when I, you know, when I came to myself, you know, and and made room for God to come into my life. And I know that but God, dude, we're not, 
you know, we're not having this conversation, you know, and I can't, you know, I'm not, I am not a gambler, but I, but I know every day, dude, that I'm playing with house money. (laughs) 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 You know what I'm saying? It's not, you know, Uh I can't, you know, I got, I got, I, you know, my, my, my faith was my faith and I'd been, you know, and I was, I was, I was saved, you know, I mean, as much, you know, I was saved before I actually knew like, like what it was like, yeah, you'd be set, you're saved and like, but to, to be in relationship and to understand and have to lean on that relationship, I had to lean on that relationship or I was going to die. Right. <laughs> yep. And it's the only, the only way out is through this. The only way out is through this door. Right. When you come to that place in your life, the only way out is through this door of faith. That's the only way out, you know, and you accept that and you walk through that door. You cannot you cannot walk. through. You cannot come through the other side of that door. Knowing what that truth is. And not be grateful. Mm. So you're one of the most grateful people I know. Who's one of the most grateful people, you know, Um, one of the most grateful people I know. Well, that would be, that would be, that would be you. One, well, one, you know, I would throw your name. There are a few people that I would, I would, I would throw their name in that hat. I would throw your name in that hat. I would throw my mother's name, you know, in that hat on the, on a good day. I have another friend on a very, on a good day. I would throw my man, Steve Scofus. I would throw his name in that. <laughs> in that hat as well. I know Steve. So <laughs> we might need to talk to lawyers before we publish this. You know. <laughs> What about um, performing live? Uh, you must have so many great memories, but yeah. are there particular dates, particular performances that are touchstones for you that you you return to and say that was really unique and special? Yeah, you know every every show is uh, every show isn't isn't. You know, I don't feel good about every show. It's like, you know, the, the people ask me, my mom will ask me or my wife will ask me, you know, how was the show? And it's like, yeah, it was okay. You know, but there are those moments. There are those times, you know, and, they, and I can count them, you know, where I felt like I've like, yeah, you hit that out of the park. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you hit that out of the park, you know, where everything, where everything is working and you can't, you know, and I don't know if you experience this when you're, you know, when you're given, when you're, uh, when you're in conversation um, with your audience, but there's like, there's no, I mean, it's a, well, we're doing different, you know, I'm a performer, right? So I'm, I'm, you know, but like there are times when I'm on stage, dude, and like, I can't, it's like, you can't do anything wrong. And you don't even know what, and you don't know what it is. You know what I'm saying? But like everything, everything is working, right? And one of those times was, uh, was in, was in Detroit. Uh, performing at home at uh, at uh, now it's called the Aretha. Then it was called uh, at Shane Park. You know, one of the you know Detroit audience. My my career was built on the love of of the city of Detroit. So uh, to go home and or to be at home performing and turn it out, as we say, you know, is 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 really a monumental experience to have. So on those those nights when it's just you know, magical. There's obviously a lot of things that go into that, you know, the venue, some venues are better than other venues, the sound in the venue, better than some are better than others. But what role does the audience play in an experience like that? Oh, a a performance is a performance is a dialogue, you know, it's not a it's not a monologue, you know what I'm saying? So you're feeding off of the audience and the and the and the and the person on stage, you know, you're feeding off of, of each other, you know, um, but then, but then, you know, and that's just on, that's just, you know, us out here doing the work, the tact, the tactile work of being a performer and understanding the lights and the sounds and how you do that. But the, the higher level of thinking is every time you get on stage, it's an act of service. Mm. So it doesn't matter what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Because it's not really because right. It's not really about it's not. It, yeah. You God has positioned you to be in this place in front of this audience, but it's really not. It's really not about you. So it, it's really a dance. Right. It's really a dance. Like, do you have to go on stage and know, like, this is really 
not about you. You know what I'm saying? I give my testimony where I give a, you know, there's a segment of the show where, uh, what I, where I speak about faith. That's the most important moment of the show. So while I may not be in tune, the lights might not be great. I could speak about my faith and they could change somebody's life, you know? Um, so it's really, it's really an act of service. Anytime I, you know, I, I, and, and, and that really alleviates a lot of the pressure knowing that it's not, you know, you can't, you can't, you, if you, you know, you can't mess this up, you know, you didn't get here by yourself and you're not going to stay, you're not going to stay here, but you, you're you not going to stay here by yourself. Yeah. One of the things that struck me reading the book was, was the chapter on temptation. Yeah. Um, what were you trying to tell your audience in talking about temptation in the book? Um, you know, temptation is, uh, I think what I, you, you know, and, 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 and in that chapter, I'm talking about, you know, at a, a, a season of my life where, you know, I was in a relationship and I was, you know, I was actually, I was engaged. And then I, you know, and I, and I was engaged and seeing another, and seeing a, another woman outside of my relationship. And uh, so I, you know, I tell that story. I, I talk about my failings, you know, because um, we live in a world where we post all the good stuff on social media. And we want people to think that life is great. It's like, no, dude, I'm broken. Right? That's not me. You telling me and showing me how fantastic your vacation was and, and how great the meal you're having is and how beautiful your kids are. That doesn't change my life. Right. You know, what changes my life, what changes people's lives is when you share your brokenness and they can identify with it and they see that you've come through the other side. So the message, the theme is, or one of the themes of the book is, is that failure, failure, your failure is not final. Mm. Failure is not final, right? Yeah. The devil's biggest trick in that season of my life, dude, it took me years to get over that because the devil's biggest trick is to make you believe that, and I was in the middle and this was like i was just starting my career off right so i'm like you know this can derail your whole thing the devil's biggest trick or one of his biggest tricks is to make you think that you can't get back to god mm. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it makes me want to cry right it makes you yeah. make you think that you can't get back yes you know? so yeah i'm sorry i, I talked too much but no yeah. you've led you've led me right to 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 my last question which is um you know, when I talk to people about you, when I talk to your fans, when I talk to um, people who know and love you, they they describe you um, as as having this authenticity. And and in reading the book, I was trying to think about this and 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 what is the root of this and 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 how does this express itself? And and one of the things in that is that you have this this great ability to to be vulnerable there's this great vulnerability in your music there's this great vulnerability in being with you there's this great vulnerability in the book and and from that vulnerability i think comes an extraordinary authenticity you talk about people posting on uh, social media you know they're posting themselves you know with their family and whatever but they're not saying oh yeah and after we took the photo you know my husband's not talking to me and my teenage kid yeah. isn't talking to me and so none yeah. of that but there, there is this authenticity and i think it is driven by um a vulnerability and that takes courage um how did you learn to make yourself vulnerable how did you get comfortable making yourself vulnerable are you even comfortable making yourself vulnerable you, you appear to be but maybe maybe not yeah, I think uh, you know, in, in large part, I, I I owe that to my to my recovery circle of you know that's what you know I learned to do that you know and was really kind of surprised that like when I you know it's like everybody doesn't do that you know when I walked into another room filled with people who were like me and they were showing me that vulnerability and I was like wow. You know, and that was my and that was my freedom. I grew up not we grew up. I grew up not talking about anything. We never talked about anything. We, you know, everybody in my family, we all knew we were crazy and nobody talked about it. Right. I got I got sober and we I learned to put your crazy, put your crazy on the table. 
you know, put the crazy out in the open, put your dysfunction out in the open, but you can't cure what you won't confront, you know, put it out there on the table and let people and let people see that and be and experience some freedom. Right. And I know these things and these things are true, but what's also true is that last night, you know, me and my wife were fighting like cats and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's all it's all baked into the same cake, you know, and um, and that's the truth. That's the that's the, that's the, you know, the common thread for all of us. So embrace that, you know, and 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 then for those of us who are of a certain age or beyond a certain age, life is too short to not be transparent, you yeah. know, to not tell the truth and to not get to where it is you know, get to what you need to get to, you know, in a timely fashion. Awesome. Love your humanity. Um, love the way you share yourself with the world. And um, really blessed to have had this time with you today. I hope we can do it again. Again, my guest is Kim. He's, uh, his new book is Share My Life. Grab a copy. Six studio albums, but he recommends you start with chemistry. I recommend the same. Thank you so much, Kim. Matthew Kelly. Come on now. It's been a pleasure, man. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you too soon. Blessings to you and your family. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, man.